Lesson 10.7, Problem Solving Shape Patterns. We can use the strategy Act It Out to solve pattern problems. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects whose order will help us predict what will come next. We have these numbers 2, 4, 6, 8. Do you know what would come next in this space? If you looked at what was happening with the numbers, they're skip counting by 2. The next number would be 10. The order helped us predict what will come next. We can use objects, such as pattern blocks, to model and extend the pattern. This can help us identify missing figures or the figures that come next in the pattern. We have this yellow hexagon and an orange square, a yellow hexagon, an orange square, a yellow hexagon. Can you figure out what comes next? If you said orange square, you're right. The order of these pattern blocks helped us predict what would come next. We can find patterns all around us in our home, school, or outside. There are patterns in our clothes, furniture, artwork, even in games. Look at this rug. Do you see the pattern? We can even see it has line symmetry. If we put a line like this, we see the two sides match. It even has horizontal line symmetry, doesn't it? And the pattern of the shirt is plaid. The stripes are white and then a dark brown and then a white. There's a pattern there. Even the game, we can see there's a railroad in the middle, a railroad in the middle, a railroad in the middle, and a railroad in the middle. There's a pattern to that game. We could finish coloring these shapes by looking for the pattern they make. The pattern is a yellow octagon in an orange square, and they're taking turns, aren't they? This type of pattern is called a tessellation. But by looking at what's happening, with the yellow octagons and orange squares, we could finish coloring it. We can look for a pattern to find missing pattern blocks. What might be the two missing shapes of this pattern? We see three blue rhombuses, then two green triangles. And then there's only two blue rhombuses and one triangle, but then there's three again, and two again, and three again. So the pattern must be three blue rhombuses and two green triangles. There must be a blue rhombus and a green triangle missing. We found the pattern and we could complete the missing pieces. We described the patterns by using three, two, three, two, three, two, and it keeps repeating. So we can describe the pattern using numbers three, two, three, two. So what might be the next figure in the pattern? I see there's one square, four squares, nine squares, then 16 squares. What would go here? We can think one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16. This one must be five times five is 25. There's one on this side, there's two on this side, three on this side, four on this side. It must have five on the side and five going across the top. And we would know the very next one after this one would be a six times six equals 36. 36 squares. The description of a pattern is how the objects are changing and repeating. We have some arrows here and the arrows are pointing left, up, right, down, then left again. Do you know what would be the next direction for this space? Well, after left came up, so it must be up. What might the next direction be? Well, after up, it pointed to the right. And after it pointed to the right, it pointed down, so that must be down and the pattern would keep repeating. Now what would happen if we only had 
one or two arrows. What if we only had these two arrows, the left and the up? Would we know what the next direction in the pattern would be? Well, that would be really hard. We don't have enough objects to know what the pattern is. We've only got two. And even if we had three, we wouldn't know if we have the pattern correct. So we need several objects to know what a pattern is. These little mice, this little mouse is facing to the left, this one's facing forward, and this one's facing to the right, and this one's facing forward, then he's facing to the left again. So what direction would the mouse be facing for the next space? He went left, forward, right, forward, left, if you said forward, you're right. You're correct. And what would go in this space? What direction would he be facing? We've got left, forward. It would be facing in the right direction. And we could keep repeating this pattern. A pentomino is a figure made of five same size squares, and each square must share a side with its neighbor. And the units in the pentamino can have different combinations. And the different pentaminos can be arranged into patterns. You can make a pattern like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or many others. When we look for a description of a pattern, we look for the differences in size, shape, color, position, and the amount of the shapes. Can you tell which shape is missing from this pattern? We have a trapezoid, then two squares, a trapezoid, two squares, a trapezoid. Well, there should be a square there, shouldn't there? When we look for a description of a number pattern, we compare the values of the numbers to find a rule. The numbers go 0, 1, 3, 6, 10. And we ask ourselves, what's the difference between this number and this number? Well, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. And what's the difference between this one and this one? Well, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And the difference between the 3 and the 6, 3 plus 3 is 6, we can start to see the pattern that the numbers are going from 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and then 6 plus 4 is 10, so do you know what would go in that space? We would have 10 plus 5. So the rule for this number pattern is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and we could keep going. We could keep adding more numbers. For this one, our numbers are 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, and then we have a missing one. We ask ourselves the difference between the 1 and the 5. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5. Then we have a 2. And the difference between the 5 and the 2, we took away 3. And if we look at the numbers, we can see the rule is plus 4 minus 3. Plus 4 minus 3. Plus 4, we'd have 3 plus 4. Do you know what would go in that space? If you said 7, you're correct. Sophia is making a quilt that is 10 squares wide and has 8 rows. And the border of the quilt is made by using each toy design equally as often. That means she's going to use the same amount of toy designs. Each square can hold one toy design. So how many of each toy design does she use for the border? And we think. We can use the letters B for boat, C for car, P for plane, and T for truck to represent each toy image. And the border goes around the edge of the quilt. The border would be this little space going around the edge of the quilt, and she wants to put squares of the toy designs in them. It's 10 squares wide and has eight rows. Since Sophia's quilt is 10 squares wide with 8 rows, we can use grid paper that has 10 squares wide and 8 rows. 
we can use the BCPT repeating the pattern until the border is full. We can start up here in this corner and put B, C, P, T, and repeat it, B, C, P, T, B, C, P, T, going all the way around, repeating the pattern. We need to find how many times each toy design was used. We can count the number of times each letter was used. We count how many Bs there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means she used the toy boat figure eight times. We can count the C for car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we can count the P's for plane and the T's for train. We could also count how many times the entire pattern is repeating. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all repeating eight times. That means each toy image was used eight times. And the pattern repeated all the way around the border. Using the pattern BCPT for boat, car, plane, train, which toy design will be in the 11th square? So we think, we could count the squares around our grid to find the 11th square, and that would be the 11th toy. Or we could write the pattern repeatedly, B, C, P, T, B, C, P, T, until we get to the 11th letter, B, C, P. And the 11th square would be the plane. Sarah made a necklace using the pattern one blue bead, two yellow beads, three red beads. If she used 24 beads in all, how many times did she repeat the pattern? How many of each color was used? So be careful, there are two questions to answer. How many times did she repeat the pattern and how many of each color was used? And we can make a table showing the number of beads each time the pattern is used. There's one blue bead, two yellow beads and three red beads if she uses it one time. That's a total of six beads used. If she does it two times, then we're gonna have two times one blue bead, two times two yellow beads, and two times three red beads. That'll be a total of 12 beads used. We can repeat on our table. Three times would be three blue, six yellow, nine red with a total of 18, and then four times would be four blue, eight yellow, 12 red, and 24 beads. And that's how many she used in all. So we know she used four blue, eight yellow, and 12 red. Now, we also could have written B for blue, Y for yellow, and R for red. And because there's one blue, we do one B, two Ys for two yellows, and three Rs for three reds, and repeat it until we have 24 letters and then count the letters used. Either way, we'll get the same answer. We need to remember there's usually more than one way to solve a problem. Some ways are easier than others. In our next lesson, we're gonna be in chapter 11 and learn about angles and how to measure angles. I hope you're having a great day and I I'm really proud of you for watching these math videos. I know I say it a lot, but I really am. And I'll see you next time. Bye.